Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So late last night, we did this one. This went up on uh, Patreon, Patreon exclusive, uh, talking about ooh, a lot of still the gamesmanship that's afloat, as this is one big chess game to the control system. And even more stuff that we just really cannot mention on YT. And there's stuff in this that we really probably shouldn't mention. So we're going to tread lightly. Um, and I know this video is going to get demonetized. Um, not that it really matters because they just do what they want to do anyway. Uh, again, this is this is part of what we want to get across is they control through everything that has made life comfortable or more comfortable for you know people in this modern era than it was in other eras on purpose because they've also in making us more comfortable we are in some ways the softest generation that we know of and that's just true uh, again you get used to playing virtual games instead of going out and playing physical games it, you know you get used to getting on a virtual exercise bike or whatever it is you know it's it's all part of of the softening of the population to the point where when they're really hit with hardship they won't know how to react and the population will beg to be able to own nothing and 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 that's true this is exactly what we've been saying the whole time there's there's good signs. There's really, and this is what I really want to um, highlight on this one. <laughs> okay, the news. Well, there's some good news and there's some bad news. And so here you have a new law in Scotland that's going to require everyone who has even one chicken to register it with the state. If you don't, you could go to jail or be fined 5,000 pounds for one chicken. One chicken. They say it's because of bird flu. This is tyranny. Of course, we've been living in a tyrannical system. And so Peter was the one that we were showing yesterday, um, his tweet saying, yay, you know, go Oklahoma. And then before that, we had go, go Louisiana. But then we still have other places that are just getting more totalitarian. And by the way, Oklahoma has joined Louisiana and saying they're going to ignore anything that comes from the WHO, the WEF, and the UN, if there is any sort of dates for men, remember that term, we, we're going to have to go back to that terminology because, um, you know, we're going back to the past. We're going back to 2020 again in some ways, but this time it's going to run through um, a little differently. Well, it definitely feels like there's some more harassment going on if you're one that's um, just a little too close to this truth or if you're a little too outspoken about the truth um it, you know it, it's touching nerves on people so we have to go back to coded and i'm really glad you guys are patient with us and you work with us and you completely understand because we want nothing more than to get this information out there and to help people yes absolutely the, this is from dr jane ruby but many people are talking about this this is one of the biggest buzzes this morning out there the ninth circuit has just stripped that let's put it backwards a n r m ouchies of legal liability protection so if it's not technically uh, ouchie and it doesn't even claim to prevent more spreading out there then it doesn't meet the legal definition so you know here you have a good <laughs> This is this is where we're at right now. This is a tug of war. This is uh ooh, hey, that's good. Ooh, oh, that's bad. Ooh, that's good. Oh, it's going to get you nauseous. Yes, it's it's seasickness time here. And did you know every member of Congress has an Israeli agent they have to meet with? Hmm. This is Jake Shields too. Uh he used to be quite a fighter. Uh, now he's <laughs> fighting the fight that we're fighting. And trying to expose what's going on. And David Icke says it's been happening decade after decade with the grip constantly tightening. Yeah, it's it's very, very true. Um, when you look again out there, 
and I've said this a million times and it really does uh, tick some people off. If you again look to the five books of Moses, it doesn't talk about afterlife. It doesn't because it's not about that. It's all about uh, who this one particular group is in the world and how to navigate the world and maintain their identity as a particular group in this world. So it's all about this world now. It's, it was never about an afterlife. It, it was never about that at all. It was just obedience to the system and obedience to, um, let's say, uh, their top of the pyramid power structure which is not the creator of this universe, by the way, and more and more people are waking up to that. Um, Paul Wallace, too, uh, by the way, uh, The Fifth Kind, he's, re he's wrote a series of books. Um, I'll just mention that real quick because I got a couple of his books just to see, and I was really concerned it's just going to be a rehash. Um, but it's not. It's It's talking about his... Uh, life experiences, people that he's um, interviewed, shares his own abduction spirit experience, shares his own experience with learning how to remote view. Um, actually, I, I found uh, these are very entertaining and very, very fast reads, and they do give you some real good nuggets. Um, so one of the things that I haven't always done in the past is recommend a lot of other people. Um, and I think, again, you have to just salt yourself through this. You have to say, well, you know, I don't agree with this, but this is interesting. And yeah, that's always what I've thought, that type of thing. Um, you got to just kind of wade yourself through it. But I think what the world is suffering from is an extreme lack of knowledge of uh, with the majority of people out there at all. They don't have a clue, unfortunately. And that's that cluelessness leads to death and destruction and it also leads to abject slavery it is it is dangerous even though so many people feel that they're doing the absolute right thing um they don't have time to look around and understand what's really going on behind the scenes and while they're just thinking they're doing the right thing so much destruction is happening right behind them and then here we have um we want to touch on this slightly too because this is very very important this is something that's going on with uh many many of our our children the upcoming generation and it looks like some people are starting to stand up and explain really the problems with it what is going on and, and to me this is something that's not definitely not good for anyone it's something that's supplanted it's been in since uh, it's been something that's in play to weaken our morale and our social complex since at least since the 1980s probably before that and to really weaken our children and create confusion in in a way that you can't come back from this is something you cannot come back from this is not just a fad this is not this is not just something popular that you can get over no i mean they're altering people to a point where they cannot come back and it's not okay our endocrine system our hormones they do everything for us they we need them so much and there's definitely not enough study to say if you really mess with the system what's going to happen in the long term and they just to me from what i see and just speak in my heart here they just threw this out there to the kids and any child that may seem just a little bit maybe they come from a broken home and how many broken homes do we have maybe they're picked on in school and and how often does that happen because children can be really cruel and mean so they they take the ones that are weak and unsteady and they do this so i'm hoping that this could be a big point for a turnaround where our children are protected yeah, it's it's a real ebb and flow uh, at this time with some good, some bad going on. You have a former NASA astronaut, William Anders, who took the famous Earthrise photo during Apollo 8 and died from a plane crash incident. He was 90 years old. Uh, the crash is being investigated. You know, and of course, you know, what was real, what wasn't real, was any of it real? 
Uh, and then, you, you know, what this does is, again, it gets some people to go to an extreme. Um, when you put out there certain, you know, statements, you have the programming that's in people that will make them look for what they want to hear. Like just by putting out their project uh, Blue Beam, right? It has given a, a group of people that want to stay kind of fundamentalist in their mindset. Well, it's Project Blue Beam. And so it negates any possibility of ETs in their mind because that's what they want. They, they don't want to have that reality where extraterrestrials are out there. They want us to be it and, you know, all that that goes with it. So it gives them the hope that they can just say, well, it's all Project Blue Beam. But that doesn't explain everything from ancient times. It doesn't explain any of the legends, you know, from the Dogen or from all the other groups, the Hopi, uh, it, and it goes on and on, the Australian Aboriginals. It doesn't explain uh, the Nazca Lions and, you know, why were they making these uh, images that are only making sense when you get way, way above the earth. It doesn't explain all the... Uh, the very, very real wars of the gods that are described in the Vedas and the Hindu texts and, and doesn't explain how uh, they understood in the Hindu texts how big our galaxy is, the shape of the galaxy. Uh, it doesn't understand, it doesn't explain at all how the Dogen could know there was uh, a star that's just simply not visible to the naked eye, even remotely where it is and, and how far away it was. I mean, it goes on and on. You know, oh, Project Blue Beam, no aliens, all a lie. And yet there's millions of pieces of evidence that that doesn't have a thing to do with. But it, it makes it so the fundamentalists, you know, have, have uh, at least something they can throw out there to maintain what they want the world to be. But this is, again, a big awakening. And so, you know, even though we are now at the point where more people believe that there's life out there than that doesn't, now the people that don't believe that there's life out there are in the majority. Uh, at the same time, you know, the control system will always try to control the narrative. And they are having a hard time because more and more people are coming online with the reality of, say, remote viewing. And this is future forecasters. There's other remote groups out there that are bigger as well doing this. There's a lot of remote viewing going on. And in fact, anybody can do this. Your success really just depends on, in some ways, your clarity and your focus and practice. Uh, and what's really going on at CERN? <laughs> well... <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, if you listen to this and what the guys get... Uh, there's some very, very dark things going on at CERN. Very dark things. As you see um, depictions that remind me of uh, that one scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark with <clears throat> uh, eyes popping out. Experiment goes wrong. Uh, you know, even more stuff like there's way more below CERN than above CERN. Way, way, way more. Uh, again, there's there's so much going on here, including what they saw of a very ritualistic, very, very ritualistic manner. Yes, continually, continually. Demons run this world. <clears throat> yeah, literal demonic entities run this world, but it doesn't mean that every alien's a demon. No, that <laughs> the ones that run this planet are. Uh, yeah, they're very demonic, and in fact, they gave us these belief systems that we have. And this is another channel <clears throat> that I enjoy watching. Uh, Peter from Poland told us about Kristoff years ago and would give us updates, and uh, Clear Seeing is trying to translate uh, what they can. Uh, I've noticed a couple of our regulars over there, so um, very good. We want to also, you know, again show that we all need to be doing our part in in s spreading our knowledge of what we know they're trying to do. 
So what he's seeing, uh, this was part two about the economic situation and the crash that's coming. So the, the war is going to bring about the economic crash. And then there's also that other side to it, you know, the side where, you know, they're monitoring every chicken in the world now. Yeah, you know, it all goes hand in hand together. But it's the economic hardship that's going to cause such a, as he says here, a total reduction of the people's wealth, that guess what? He says most people after this period of, of hardship, and it won't take long, will go crawling back to the system and beg to be in it, even if they can no longer own their car, own their house, own their TV, own their computer. No, because everybody's going to just agree to rent everything to get some sort of semblance of just coming back to where we are at this moment. So this is what he's seeing. But but true freedom lies in being able to support yourself outside of the system. That's the only way. And this is, again, something that we've been saying. And, and people will be like, well, how can I? i got to just, you know, count on this, count on that. Well, I mean, this is the reality we're going to be faced with. So we'll have to make decisions because after this crash and, and you know, how bad things get economically, what he's seeing is people will agree, will agree to almost anything. Mm -hmm. and, and really, that's what, what I've been saying and we've been saying the whole time. Right. You know, we've been trying to get people prepared for for a rocky landing, you know, something that's going to create a lot of bumps, so something that's going to create a, a grief and confusion and, you know, trying to talk to people about getting stronger, um, definitely getting healthier, because I think that's key. You know, how healthy are you? What how how are you uh, going to maintain your lifestyle or at least just maintain the basics what are your basics you know i think we all need to sit down and ask ourselves this question it's like what do i need to get by from you know day to day to day and then start pairing away or start looking at things in your life where you can replace that if you depend on the system how can you depend on yourself and believe me this is not going to be an overnight thing it's not about getting a, a, a backpack and, and getting some uh, Patriot's Pantry food. No, it's not about that. That's that's the easy thing to do. And I, I wouldn't really eat that anyway because it would really make me sick. Honestly, there's a lot of preservatives in that food. Um, my, my body needs the whole food, you know, so we need to transfer our bodies back to whole foods. If you can look at it and know what it is and it has that one ingredient and you can sustain off that, then we're getting somewhere and you can produce it in your own home. Then we're starting to get somewhere, you know, going back to sewing, very important, having patterns for clothes and knowing how to read those patterns. If you're someone who can crochet, if you're someone who can knit, um, looking at the skills that you have, what skills do you have? And there's a lot of people out there who are trying to maintain themselves and they're trying to teach their children and the kids just they're not interested right now but I want to encourage the parents keep going because even though your children do not usually listen to what you say they're always watching always watching what you do and that that's the part that sinks in so keep on keeping on keep setting that example and it's not just for our children it's for those around us. So we're here. We have a big part to play. You might feel lonely, but you're not alone. And uh, Larry Cook, you know, is always talking about uh, the problems with the ouchies. And so talking about some ways to detoxify nano zeolite for heavy metals, bentonite clay for gut, psyllium husk for gut. And it goes on chlorella, spirulina, they're powerful wheatgrass. Yeah, sweat, saunas, that's awesome, um, enemas, colonics, uh, we use ozone, uh, I don't know if we would be uh, still here if we didn't have the ozone, um, because the ozone's just been a, a game changer, and again, uh, anybody that w wants to reach us, all the all information is on every single video now, um, it, regarding, you know, the process of making an appointment, 
uh, regarding where to email, uh, all the links, everything is on every single video. So just scroll down. Um, yeah, there's so much we can do. We, we have to stop eating the processed foods first and foremost because they are so loaded. And don't trust anything that you don't know where it comes from. You know, again, we, we buy locally as much as possible. And we're going to be shifting to growing our own. Uh, as we have our first peach coming in, we're going to have hundreds of figs. Uh, the fig trees are doing well. Um, <clears throat> in, in just about, actually, you know what? Today is the anniversary of when we got this house. Uh, so we have this house one year and this house did not have functioning hot water actually didn't even have water going into the um, into the bathroom it didn't have water going into the kitchen sink uh, it had no hot water heater that was working it had a, a dangerous electrical system um, it hadn't been lived in in years um, in fact, it was kind of, you know, talk about a fixer upper. It's a gut job. It's a gut job. But we, we have in one, one year's time, we've done most of the physical work ourselves. Uh, we, we, we don't really have the ability to hire people out per se, although we did hire an electrician um, and, and a plumber because, you know, those are things that um, I, I don't really get into too much. Um, but I do do uh, the carpentry side of things, not as a professional, just something that I've learned how to do over the years. And we've still managed to put up about 50 uh, fruit trees and bushes. Uh, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven raised bins, you know, raised garden, uh, raised beds. Um, we have, gosh, tons of stuff uh, already in place and growing. We fenced off about 1,400 square feet uh, of the property. Uh, again, we, we bought this property for less than six digits. Um, and, you know, it had issues. I mean, the house itself had tons of issues, but the property was a diamond in the rough. And it did come with 10 uh, large pecan trees that are probably 50, 60 years old haven't been producing because they didn't have the nutrition, but we've been addressing that. Um, and they were overgrown with vines that were strangling them out. And we've been, you know, cleaning and getting rid of uh, invasive things and, you know, just nonstop work the past year. But, you know, literally in one year's time now, we're fairly set up uh, to where we, we, are, we will at least have our fruits and veggies coming in consistently. And um, I do have enough um, plastic um, greenhouse what would you call it greenhouse wrap, greenhouse wrap you know this six millimeter um, plastic because I'm going to be building uh, one or two greenhouses before we get into the winter you know totally from scratch um, so you know we we're just doing it because again we have a very limited budget and the property costs probably one fourth of the average property in the U.S. The average cost of the average home, this costs like 25 percent of it. So you can do it um, if you so choose. Um, but we understood it's it's got to be about getting out of the system. Kentucky is a good place. West Virginia is a good place. Arkansas, um, southern Missouri. Um, yeah, very far eastern Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama. Um, there's there's a lot of places. Tennessee, you know, a lot p tons of people are going to Tennessee. The, there's a lot of places that are um, better homesteading states than others, and also you know some are very unaffordable and some are relatively affordable. Look at this. They say this is natural. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Hmm. I don't know. It looks looks pretty pretty square to me but you know i'm sure it just kind of broke up that way I, I know earth has a strange way of of doing things um you know there there are choices to make they're they're not going to be easy choices for a lot of people and it does take time it does take time to to kind of walk yourself out of the system we did not get in the system overnight and a lot of people depend on it still so baby steps pick one thing and uh you know figure out an alternative and start there because that's that's really all we can do but we need to start somewhere 
Absolutely. So the splitting of timelines is another fascinating subject. And, and really, this is, this is the ultimate choice. Do we want to stay in the system or do we want to get out of the system? And how much do we really, really value our, our freedoms? Because everything they're trying to do is trying to weigh us down, mind, body, spirit. And of course, they're going to roll out that big war and they're going to roll out this and that. And they're going to keep trying to do what they've been doing because ultimately they're they're looking to literally trap the soul so they could leech off the energy of the soul. It's not even about the controlling your physical body in this life. So so many of those uh, stories about this is really a battle for your soul. It are, it's very true. It is very, very, very true. Uh, and again, self-determination is something that's given to all of us by the true source of all things. And that kitty, that kitty's cute. He has a good sense of where his paw placement is and, and it looks like he has fun with his human too. As always, guys, thanks for being part of this family. Look forward to your support. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.